what's going on guys? This is Brad with Spike Fitness and today I'm going to do some bench training. It is end of April. It's April 28th and uh, yeah, it's bench day. Dan's not here because he's sick, but Tim is back from wherever he was. <laughs> and uh, we, got, we got my other buddy here. This is Dave rolling around in the background here. So he's going to be training with us a little bit too. It's going to be good. And uh, yeah, so deload week is over. Um, and moving into like a regular training block or back into the regular training block. This week would call for round 405 for some sixes. So we'll get into that and hopefully, uh, hopefully everything's smooth and easy. So yeah, I think Tim's gonna be going a little bit lighter because he's getting ready for some other stuff in the near future. That's gonna require him to be light and fast. Kevin. Which he is, he is currently, he is currently not light and fast. <laughs> Unlike myself, nimble, quick, like a jaguar or something that's nimble and quick. She's laughing at me. This is the wife. She's ducking. I won't show her, but you'll have to just trust me that she was in fact there. At any rate, all the joking aside, gonna get after it. Uh, hopefully, stick around. Maybe we'll have something cool today. Probably help out Dave a little bit. See what he does as far as bench goes. Because I think, I think he's maybe going to teach us a few things. <laughs> Bench specialist. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get after. Here we go. Yeah. All right. So we got Dave up doing some bench right now. We saw a practice uh, set that I did not record, and I've made some corrections to his form and what I think. And we're going to try that. So remember that setup. So go through the full setup like I did. So feet up on the bench. Lift up your butt. Stack in, bring those shoulders in like you're gonna pinch a pencil between the shoulder blades. Nice and tight. Now you're gonna apply pressure with the hands so that you're not gonna come out of position with the upper body. Yep, good, good. And your legs are gonna stay tight the whole time. Don't relax. I want you to be pushing with your legs so hard that you could almost scoot yourself off the end of the bench this way, okay? So before you unwrap, take a big breath. There you go, good. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, three more, eight, nine, ten. That's good. Good. Cool. Feel a bit more stable? Oh, yeah. So, like, obviously, it takes some getting used to in terms of, like, getting into position, but we'll work with that for your sets, yeah. and by the end of it, we'll see how you're feeling. I don't breathe, so I take one breath, yeah. and all my reps are on one breath. So anything, anything basically ten or less, I'm not breathing. Yeah. So um, as soon as you get wound up, so for you, Tim, once I'm set, I'm gonna say hook, and all I need you to do is give me, give me some, some help out of the rack, but try not to like, try not to lift me. Basically, I'm, you're just up and over and clear the rack and then rotate me out, kind of gentle, and then slow, easy release. Because if you just drop it, it's like, oh, it's a shot. Yeah. So nice, easy release, and then I'm off to the races. I'm going to bang out, uh, I don't know, probably three maybe. Your 10th rep looks like, like kind, of, kind of trash because you let your elbows flare. And then I said, tuck, you're retucking the shot up. Like, it felt like a springboard. The speed, the speed was, I, I, I wish, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have caught it, but like, I almost wish that I had like the high, the high definition, high speed cameras going. Because like, I can perceive the speed difference from one rep to another. But like, I don't know how well it translates to this kind of footage. Yeah. But it's like, it's like fucking amazing. It's like, once I'm like, hey, do this, and you see that that transition happen, and then like the breath is like so much smoother. It's like it's it's long breath should have looked as shittiest, but it looked like probably not that. Yeah, and it's like. Yeah, did you see that? I do. Yeah, all the time. All right, so hey, um, quick intermission into the workout here. Uh, I didn't record this this last set. I, I should have, but I didn't. Uh, I'm a failure for that. But we're working on some stuff with Dave. Give him some some 
the same kind of cues and things that we, we work on. And uh, we're working on this position and getting him going. And what I notice, and let, let me know if, because we haven't talked about this yet, what my observation is. Let me know what's in, if, you, if you see the same thing. But like on those repetitions, right? Especially that first one, it kind of crashed down on you. And there was like this weird reversal where it was like the control wasn't there, right? It was like it seemed a little out of control. But then the subsequent reps were pretty good. And then there was like a rep or two at the end where same thing, that, that control was kind of lost. Where, where he's losing that control, that, 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 that ability to control the weight more appropriately, is the breathing piece. So that's something we haven't discussed yet. So I know that I said when I'm doing 10 or less reps, I don't breathe. And one of the reasons why is it, is it creates um, inner, uh, inner abdominal pressure. And that inner abdominal pressure allows my, my abdomen and everything to stay tight and rigid so that this isn't moving at all either, right? It allows for that, that smooth application of power to that bar. Breathing, if you're, if you're not used to not breathing, it can be kind of a weird thing. So what I'm gonna say for you is, we're gonna try to hold breath for say three reps. So at the top, right, you're, before you do it on a rack, big breath, one, two, three, no breath. Breathe at the top, re-breathe, set, one, two, three, same thing, right? So that's how I want you to practice the, the breathing piece. Because I want you, I want you to set and reset. And what was happening for that loss of control was a disjointing of your breathing pattern and your movement pattern. So what I want to do is, so I, I'm not going to get you to not breathe just yet. But what I want you to do is, I want you to marry the breathing with the with the, the, the action, not not dissimilar to shooting, right? So if you got if you're trying to train somebody to shoot and their breathing is all wonky and it's not in line with their action, it will affect the action. So if, if we can get the breathing in line with the action, the, the action becomes better. So that's what we're going for on the next set. And I'll be better about recording that next set is, is uh, demonstrating that and trying to line up the breathing with the action. All right, remember the breathing piece, okay? So yeah. before you want to rack, big breath. Hold that breath for the first three reps. Yeah. When you breathe again, wait till you're up top. Yeah. Breathe out, breathe in, reset, like lock that back in. Yeah. Three more reps. Yeah, no, you're right, man, because what I did is what I've been taught before, which is breathe in, exhale on the, on the bench. Breathe in, exhale on the bench. So I know, I know exactly what I did that was wrong. Yeah. It's hard to break. I got years of bad habits. Nice really tight. Make sure the legs are tight, no movement. Squeeze the shoulders back and in. Big, big breath. Good. Hold it. One, two, three. Breathe, reset. Okay, four, reset, five, six, seven, eight, give me two more, nine, good, ten, easy, super easy, nice, and it looked way smoother under control too. Yeah, none of this shit. I wasn't seeing the same wobbles and stuff. I messed you up on that first rep a little bit. I just, the wobbles were gone, like you said, but that very first rep you came down at an angle, and that was because where I released you. I didn't even notice this if you did. My, well, my hand was in your way. Okay, so um, we just talked the breathing piece. So Dave, can I get you to describe a little bit about what we just did and how it felt? Like, did it feel different than no, what we did before? Yeah, no, you were right. Um, and what I had done before. Um, well, let me get you. Let me actually get you here. So I, I don't know if uh, it got caught on the previous, but basically what I was saying is what I was, had been taught before was that you take a breath and then as you're coming up, you exhale. Um, and what I noticed is you were completely right. So when I do the exhale while I'm bench pressing, um, that release of pressure has caused me to come up at a weird angle. Yeah. Uh, I've always thought like, hey, right hand short or left hand is kind of what's made it weird and it's not. It's that complete breathing piece. So uh, basically what I did is I tried to do, I felt good, so I did four instead of three on my reps, um, but I felt smooth, I felt more controlled. Uh, everything was even, um, and it's just bringing everything down to like one focal point. Yeah. I think it was really good. Uh, so that's what I got out of it, but it felt cool. a lot better to do it uh, the way that you said rather than what I had been doing before. Cool. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, hey, there we go. So, you know, the getting the breathing in line with the, the motion, the movement, is a real big step in the right direction. So we'll keep working on here. Yeah. Woo. Hardcore. Did, 
Dude, your operator's fucked. <laughs> operator's fucked. I'm gonna turn it on. All right. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brad with Spite Fitness, and today I'm gonna do something totally different. This has nothing to do with fitness. Nothing to do with fitness. Just random thoughts. I learned this from my cousin Claire, who I think he's a chemist. I don't. Whatever. He's smart. Claire. Appreciate you treating, uh, teaching me this trick so long ago. So we have beers. These are Miller Lights. They are both the same. They are both unopened. Yours is unopened. All right, so they're fresh, um, have not been overly disturbed. Um, so there's a trick that my cousin taught me with a penny. So if you have a beer that's mildly shook, normally you would not want to open it. Uh, but you can mildly shake a beer and put a penny on the bottom and then open it and it will bubble up but not like get all crazy and foam over. So we're gonna kind of hope to demonstrate that for you. So I will shake mine, you will shake yours. I will have Penny, he will not, and we'll see what happens. Just do like one, two, three, shake. All right, so are you ready? Go one, two, three. I think I did mine more. All right, here we go. Oh, <laughs> total bust. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right. So this, we're gonna continue to drink every <laughs> This failed, but uh, it's fun nonetheless. It works uh, with Bud Light. Yeah, yeah, it does work with Bud Light. All right. Anyway, these are random thoughts. <laughs> See you in the next one.